I'm so glad you all came. I'm going to switch to share screen. We're all here together and that's really what counts. I'm going to tell you all about my trip to France. Art Deco Society of the Palm Beaches goes to France. And here we go. So really what we're talking about is the International Exposition des Arts Décoratifs et Industriales Modernes. In 1968, we look back at this 1925 exposition, Arts Décoratif, Arts Déco. And then we call everything from 1925 to 1939 when the war started, Art Déco. If you'd like to visit uh, this link to get on anytime, you can go to artdecopb.org. Whoa, sorry. That's artdecopb for palmbeach.org. And we just started a, a World Art Deco Day, started by the International Coalition of Art Deco Societies. We have declared April 28th, which is the first day of this international exposition in Paris was April 28th through October. So oh. to celebrate April 28th, I went to Buenos Aires, Argentina for the last World Congress uh, a year ago in November. Let's tango. So we're gonna have a presentation. We're just announcing it tonight, April 28th, which is also a Wednesday evening, but it's the fourth Wednesday of April, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're gonna do Art Deco, Argentina. Uh, this is what we did last month. We celebrated, what's happening here? We celebrated the International Coalition of Art Deco Societies, the ICAD's Habana Deco visit, which was uh, 2013, I believe. And this, this building is the uh, Building of Americas. We see here, everyone can see my pointer. I'm using a pointer. Uh, this is North America, Latin America, Middle America, South America. And we see here already one, two, three stepping up. We see a flat roof. We see a banding stripe. And these are Art Deco elements that we're going to talk about today and we're going to see all over the world. There is Art Deco all over the world. Wherever there was architecture built in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And of course, hopefully, if it's still standing, that development did not come and tear it down. I am a mural artist and designer. This is one of my Art Deco murals at Indian Ridge School in West Palm Beach, uh, uh, K through 12. I, I did many, many murals in that school, but this is such a fun one and it has all the Art Deco elements, rounded corners, triangles, the zigzag, which we call steps, stepping down, which is of course like the pyramid in Egypt, the straight line, the celebration of the straight line, and of course, everything in threes, where we will see three stripes of one, two, three. Alrighty. A recent painting I did uh, with, uh, I collaborated with an, uh, another artist friend, Steve Browse, and it was a true collaboration where I did an art deco border and the flamingos, which are the art deco, again, we see the one, two, three, and that, that top hat for Fred Astaire and the cane. And Steve Browse did the background with his one, two, three, little figures, his little gingerbread figures. I'm sorry about that. Why is it jumping ahead? Hold it. <laughs> Previous. And um, his little jelly beans that uh, he puts in his art. And I did the palm tree. So it was a true collaboration. Very large painting. It's a, so big we put it in two pieces. So it's two uh, pieces that are four foot by eight foot. And now Let's go to the next. Okay. So I'm a speaker at, um, I'm a Florida Humanities Speakers Bureau in Tallahassee, uh, where I spoke at the Historic State Capitol Museum. They have a wonderful program that gives grants to um, historic societies and art groups that invite speakers as myself to come and speak. That's a Florida Humanities Speakers Bureau. It's, the program is called Florida Talks. But this is just running away today. I wrote my first book as a preservationist historian, art instructor, museum docent, Art Deco of the Palm Beaches, which you can purchase on uh, artdecopb.org. And my second book, which is in color, Murals of the Palm Beaches. So I'm an author of two books and uh, very exciting for you to have them. Okay, 
So what happened was in May of 2017, the International Coalition of Art Deco Societies had their World Congress, the 14th World Congress in Cleveland. And the theme was artists, designers, and craftsmen. This is the logo for ICADS, where we see the Art Deco lines of, of something that looks like kind of representative of New York, um, even though it's the world logo. Why is it just doing this? Sorry. Next. And following this, this was the logo for the Cleveland Congress which I was paid to go to. And I was going to see Severance Hall, the Cleveland Orchestra. And this is the Art Deco building there of the Cleveland Orchestra, where we see again, one, two, three, groups of three is Art Deco. We see tall, skinny women, elongated, stylized. And we see uh, octagonal shapes. We see some fluted ribbing. Again, here's the one, two, three, the groupings of the threes. No one knows why Art Deco is groups of threes. It's just time and time again, everything you look at that's Art Deco will be in threes. And this was the ceiling where we see beautiful ribbing and ovals and circles, triangles. Oh my, I was so excited to go to Cleveland. But at the same time, three weeks later, I was asked to speak at the Purple Young Art Deco Festival. Hmm, Cleveland? Well, France. I chose France. <laughs> so here it is, uh, the Perpignan Art Deco Society, the Perpignan Art Deco Festival, where I spoke, the Palais de Consulaire is the Chamber of Commerce, June 19th, 2017. This was the uh, postcard, the program, the invitation. And off I went to Paris, because if you're going to go to Perpignan, well, you, of course, you're going to stop off three days in Paris. So we went to Paris first and then Perpignan. I went with my, my good friend, Linda Fleetwood from uh, Lantana. I call her Linda Lantana. And the first thing that I noticed when I was in France, you know, we're on the bus uh, going to our hotel. Oh, my God, there was graffiti everywhere. You don't expect to see that in another country. You know, maybe maybe, you know, Manhattan, but there was graffiti everywhere. And the first thing you see is the Metropolitan, which is their tr subway train stations. Now this is Art Nouveau. And it's still standing. Why? Because this is their train stations, all built in the, in the Art Nouveau uh, style. And we can see the lettering here, this very jazzy kind of lettering and the the uh, P is very fluid. Look, it looks like a flower. All this looks like it's growing, right? Look how everything looks like it's growing. And this is a very famous doorway in Paris in the Art Nouveau style. So we don't see any straight lines. We see organic, feminine, flowery, things growing. We see, let's see here. We, we see vines and women's heads, very feminine, circles and things grow. Look at this, everything, even the doorknobs aren't straight, everything is curved. Uh, we'll see this in the Art Nouveau, stained glass patterns, again, no straight lines, vines and flowers, very feminine. Uh, Tiffany glass is a good example of Art Nouveau. We arrived at the hotel, which was an Art Deco hotel. Now this is not going to look like Miami Beach Art Deco hotel, okay? So we're gonna see all the same elements, but we're in a metropolitan city. So we're going to see a flat roof. We see straight lines. We see um, the triangle, a cut off. A lot of Art Deco uh, designs and architecture will have corner entrances, because that's just good design but this entrance was on the uh, right. So the very first day we're in Paris, what do you do? You go to the museum, the Georges Pompidou Center, built in 1977 by Italian architects. Uh, we see this high tech style, like what is that, right? It doesn't even look like a building. What they did with this high tech, they exposed the pipes. So this is built in 1977, high tech style the museum. 
And when you go to the top floor, you see the entire view of Paris. And of course here we see the Eiffel Tower. Okay, and you see people in the streets. It's a, the views are spectacular. And there I am in front of one of my favorite artists, Henri Matisse, who also paints, well, he does it also. I also paint in his style of flat, flat, very flat, bright colors, um, geometric, straight lines. Uh, my style is very much that of Henri Matisse, as you saw in the first painting that I collaborated with Steve Rouse. Okay, in the same Pompidou Center, we see Pierre Mondrian. Now this painting called a composition in, a, let's see, a red and blue and white, you know, how many times did you hear, oh, I could do that. Oh, the, uh, oh my, my, my grandchild could make that painting. What's so great about that painting? It looks like a tic-tac-toe. Anyone can do that. You have to understand, in 1937, this is not what art looked like, okay? If we think about cubism, we start to thinking that the line became important in Art Deco, but in fine art, in the fine art world, everything was also about the straight line. It was about the society had evolved through abstraction, no longer had to represent pictures of people, of kings, of queens, of portraits. Uh, we passed the still life, a bowl of fruit, impressionism, trees. We're, we're at a point where we're at such a high level of thinking that art can be minimal and simple as a few straight lines and one block of red and one block of blue. It's not that you're supposed to like it or want to buy it for your living room. It's to understand what is going on in society that the straight line is so important. Okay. We visited the Constantine Brancusi Sculpture Studio. They recreated it at this George Papadou Center. And also, sculpture is becoming simplified, elongated, one piece. It's becoming uh, just a form. It's no longer representational. In fact, right over here, uh, this piece of the woman is, uh, could be seen at the Norton Museum of Art as a bronze. Here it is, a stone right here in the corner, wait, where's my pointer? Come on, here, right here, this piece is at the Norton Museum of Art. A trip to Paris is not complete without going to the Picasso Museum, which is one of his homes, Look, this is some building, huh? Where he lived and uh, his paintings can be found. This is the ceiling where you walk up this grand staircase to a wild Picasso. Okay, so let's look at this, okay? Picasso is all about the straight line. All right, this is 1930s, all about the straight line. And look at the Egyptian influence, where you have the profile of the nose, but two eyes. When you're in profile, you can only see one eye. But the Egyptian influence, because in 1922, Howard Carter discovered King Tut's tomb, and things became Egyptian. So what also happened, let's see what we have next. This is the uh, Picasso's attic ceiling. Just very, very interesting. I took this photo to show you. Okay, but what happened uh, in the 1920s when we had this international exposition, you have the machine age reproducing things. So machines are the wave of the future. And the machines were trying to replicate art. But everything that was machine made was cheap. Nobody wanted to buy very ornate or Beaux Arts designs replicated in by the machine. So the machine though discovered they could make one thing you could not make by hand. And that was the straight line. So machines look back and the Art Deco exposition look back into all forms of art, Egyptian, Mayan, Aztec, Japanese, any geometric arts with straight lines, and they started to reproduce these designs, these machine bought items using the straight line. So everything is working all together, okay? So when I'm in Paris, 
I meet with Pascal Yves Laurent, who is the president of the Art Deco Society in Paris. Now, he has a very hard job. He works at the Beaux Arts School of Fine Arts, this academy, and he, he walks us through, which we're going to see. But people in Paris, their architecture is hundreds of years old, and they respect the Beaux Arts School and all these other eras. They, the, we had to convince the Parisians that Art Deco architecture is important. It's really interesting. So here we are, here I am with the Pascal, and he takes us to one of the rooms in the school where they have all these Beaux Arts artifacts. Okay, so you can see how machines could not produce this kind of design easily. This is the library of the school. And outside the school on the gravel was a, a, an artist and she was painting this base. I said, oh please, I must, I'm in Paris, I must paint. So she gave me the paintbrush and I finished her painting on, on that piece. And uh, Linda took a picture of me painting in Paris. <laughs> so we went to visit the, the Streamline Modern Drafting School. We left something out here, what happened? All right, no problem. Um, Pascal took us a few blocks away from his building to the Streamline Modern, which we know is wonderful architecture. Most of the Art Deco architecture in Miami and Palm Beach County is what we call Streamline Modern. So if 1925 and 1930 is high design, by the 40s, we have the absence of man's idiosyncratic embellishments what we call Streamline Modern. It's the simplification of Art Deco and the celebration of the straight line. So we see the bandings. We see the one, two, three, the groups. We see the windows are one, two, three. You can't see it here, but this is a rounded corner for speed because everything in Art Deco is fast and masculine, like fast animals like the whippet and the gazelle and the deer, okay? Here's the address of the school. Oh, this, this, this slide was supposed to go first. Uh, Pascal took us to, uh, for coffee, of course, and uh, at the Cafe Brasserie, and he got on his little bicycle and said, follow me. And then he took us to this building. And oh my, so here's, the, here's what I just showed you where it went rounded corners. And here is this very tall uh, entrance. Again, we'll see one, two, threes, but we see vertical, tall building. And I went in the building, the elevator did not work. And he said, oh, you don't want to go upstairs. And I said, oh, yes, I do. So I climbed like six flights of stairs. And when I looked down, I got this wonderful photography. On the sixth floor was the drafting room. These are all drafting tables and a wonderful view. We had to say goodbye to Pascal. And of course I gifted him with my book, Art Deco of the Palm Beaches. And we went back to our hotel. And now you can really kind of see the straight lines of the Grass Bale Hotel and the, now I don't have a picture of this uh, in my presentation, but at this outdoor restaurant, they would be eating shrimp, like, like the size, like six inch shrimp and, and all kinds of wonderful baked goods and, and, and amazing things. We did not eat there. <laughs> Here's the main entrance, there's Linda. Now this is not Art Deco, but we'll see this again uh, in Paris. This must be very typical awning in, uh, in Paris. But if we'll look here, we'll see the three circles. We see the rays of light, the straight lines. We see the balance, uh, what's on the left is on the right, uh, these Art Deco elements. We walk up one flight of stairs, a rounded staircase to our room. And on the landing, we'll see a Tamara de Lampica. She's one of the most famous Art Deco artists. And I love her because she's a female artist. So when we say, how many female artists do you know? You can say Sharon Koskoff. You can say Frida Kahlo. You can say Louise Nevelson. And you can say Tamara de Lampica. Uh, but let's look at the hotel. So we see the, the straight lines and the rays of the Art Deco relief. 
Relief is an Art Deco element and design. And we see the straight lines here, the stepping up. Here's another Tamara de Lampica. Uh, very masculine, right? Art Deco is masculine. Let's just look at this. So look at the uh, architecture in her background. She's known for these incredible backgrounds. So she'll do these full scale figures with amazing, usually architectural backgrounds. In this case, it's like a landscape background. And in this case, it also looks like cubism back here. But look at the strong lines, the, the triangle and, and, and uh, be the beginning of cubism, just the way the pieces are cut out. The fingers are very linear. And um, I really love her work. She, she has a book out, Passion by Design. They just put it in hardcover and sent me a copy. Uh, it's a wonderful book, Tamara de Lampica. Okay, so I, we, we didn't really want to go to the Louvre because that's so, such a typical thing to do. But I had not seen the pyramid, the pyramid shape that was built by I.M. Pei, who recently passed away in 1989. Um, this, so this is the Louvre. It's the largest museum in the world built in the 12th century. Okay, the largest museum of the world. But this was built in... Uh, recently hold it go back okay it was built in 1989 i am paid i think just two years ago um but this represents the pyramid and the triangle and i just had to go see that so it's huge when you go inside there's lighting i mean it's this incredible modern piece set behind a 16th century, you know, built in 1793 fortress. Okay, so the only thing I wanted to see was the Egyptian wing, which I've been to before, but I love Egyptian art so much. So, and why? Because Howard Carter discovered King Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922. And by 1925, everything Egyptian was all the rage. So when you go to the Louvre, you'll see all these wonderful Egyptian sphinx and pieces and carvings that you'll see, of course, nowhere else in the world. Black and gold, my colors, right? That's what's so popular today, black and gold. There's Linda. All right, so Linda took me to an Art Nouveau department store called Gallery Lafayette, which I had never heard about. And she said, oh my God, what a treat. We don't have Art Nouveau in the States. It's very, very hard to see, but this is the ceiling when you're on the ground floor looking up. And these are all ads for what they're selling. Like, uh, what does it say here? A sale day or something. But let's look at this floral. Everything Art Nouveau is flowers and, and design. And look at these beautiful, whoop, come back here. Flowers and an intricate design of Art Nouveau. I love Art Nouveau, even though I'm president of the Art Deco Society and have devoted my life to that. Art Nouveau and, and Art Deco go hand in hand. So Pascal, we said, well, Pascal, tell us where, where should we go? Where is the Art Deco in France? And he handed me this invitation. We did not know what it was, but it was a, a, an invitation. And he said, you must go there. Uh, and he was going out of town for a wedding, so he was not even going to go. And he gave us this ticket to something that we did not know what it was. But it did say opening soon and Palazzo. So we said, okay. So we, we got on the train and we got on a bus and we went. Well, this is to our surprise. This is the old, the, this, this is the entire building here. It's the immigration center built in the 1930s from France. But now it was called the Palazzo. And it turned out that the opening was all the food trucks because it was summertime. Uh, this is like uh, uh, May and June. And it was the opening of like, you know, the summertime where all the food trucks would come out and people would come to this building, you know, like, um, like a park and have wine and, and have food from the food trucks but you only were invited inside. It turned out in the museum had an opening and you could only go with a ticket and we went to see the show. So the building was all Art Deco, as we know, the one, two, three, the circular concentric circles, uh, the ironworks. Uh, we see Art Deco lighting. We see 
uh, uh, terrazzo floors, wonderful Art Deco lighting here. So we don't know. It, it turns out it's a museum opening, and it was celebrating an, Ita all, an Italian, all of the Italian artists' contribution to France. Uh, this was one room you weren't allowed in, but it had um, a partition, and you, you could see, because it's set up as a museum, we see the, the chevron, the Art Deco chevron, these Art Deco urns, um, the murals, and of course, the Art Deco furniture. Murals throughout. We're going to see some of the murals in this exhibit, French murals. So again, look at this woman. Come back. She, what happened? I'm so sorry. Go back. Go back, go back. Look how masculine she is, right? That's not a feminine woman. It's a, a very masculine woman with the, with the fast horse. So when we look at Art Deco, we see very strong mythological creatures. This is the winged horse, the Pegasus. Uh, this is the kind of art we see in Art Deco. Uh, here we'll see other people uh, working, right? It was the Industrial Revolution. I'm not sure what this actually represents, but beautiful murals. Uh, it looks like they're working hard. It looks like they're in India or someplace. Okay, here we see slaves working. And uh, again, I, I mentioned the deers and the gazelle, the Art Deco animals. We see speed and traveling, because this was an immigration building. So it probably showed people from all over the world. That's what the murals probably represent. All the different people who emigrated to France. This is the bathroom. I love taking bathroom pictures. And I'm so surprised when a bathroom is so psychedelic and modern and clean and beautiful. Uh, contrasting last month's uh, Cuba bathrooms. So this is the exhibit on the third floor that we were invited to. Uh, Ciao, Itali Italia. And they had a wonderful, it was a really great museum of all the inventions of the Italians. So this is the exhibit, but I was so interested. Notice the ceiling of the building. Whoa. Like, I, I just, I didn't know what to look at first, the art or the ceiling or the architecture. So it turns out that they made the bottom of this building into an aquarium, but that was completely shut off. No one was allowed in, it wasn't open for this exhibit, it wasn't open for the night. Now this building reminds me of the Palm Beach County Art Deco buildings that we have uh, revitalized, like the Armory Arts Center was an original uh, armory in the 1930s, 1939, and then became an art center. So this building was built uh, as an immigration, you know, for a government building, and now is a museum. So I had to find someone, I would not leave till I asked five people, I want to go into that aquarium. Linda didn't go. I, I would not. I kept asking, you, 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 you. I'm getting in. I got a special private tour. It was all dark with lit up. It was just magnificent. But I would not leave <laughs> until I would get to that aquarium. By the time we, we left that exhibit, everyone had arrived for the opening patio where, you know, uh, they would have food and drink and, you know, wonderful things that they do in France. So th this is the relief of the outside of the building, uh, all about traveling uh, uh, and, and you know, arriving in France. Okay, so we now went the next day, we did not actually go to the Eiffel Tower, but we went to another museum that was showing a Robert De uh, Delaunay exhibit. And here I show, as we walked by, we took a picture of the Eiffel Tower. And this is a very famous painting, Robert, Delaunay. We went to the Musée des Art Modernes, and who do we see but Robert Delaunay and these amazing muralist paintings that were breathtaking. You can't see these anywhere. I mean, you could see them reproduced easily in a book. This is what we call graphic. When something is very flat and even, and it would reproduce well. It's called graphic. So we could take a picture of this and be very happy looking at it 
you know, without seeing it in person, although of course not the size. Murals are very big. I paint very big. And then they had this Cezanne exhibit there, this entire room where you're surrounded in light. Um, and this is just one picture I'm showing you, but look, look at the, the, the scale of the human being where the art enveloped you. Got to see some really famous art, Modigliani. Now if we, what? Go back, go back, go back. If we look at the year here, okay, 1918. So this is right before Art Deco. But notice the elongated neck, the skinny, where we're stretching our females. Okay, and the only thing in the background of this painting are some lines. Okay, so portraiture really changes in the modern world. In fact, I like to call Art Deco just the beginning of modernism, not even have to call it Art Deco, because look how art is changing. Okay, look at our hand, how long and skinny the hand is. We went to an area that was Algerian and I bought the most fabulous bracelet that I only wear occasionally, I should wear it all the time. But this Algerian has a very big influence in France. And of course the Montmartre, which Salvador Dali has this wonderful exhibit, but where all the famous artists hung out, Van Gogh and uh, all the artists just hung out there. It's on top of a mountain. I was so out of breath. It's not for the weak to travel to Paris and see everything. But you see Toulouse-Lautrec, uh, like, you know, magnets and, and stationery and postcards everywhere. Like, you know, if you went to New York and you saw pictures of uh, the Big Apple. We stopped by the Moulin Rouge and I have a close up of the mural of the windmill. But it was a funky neighborhood. There's was like 42nd Street, this Moulin Rouge. It was a, a real, strange area to be in. Uh, and every night we would have dinner in a Lebanese restaurant. I have celiac disease and I am gluten free. And Middle Eastern food, uh, we could pick whatever we want. They would make us a plate and every night it was next to the hotel. We were tired, we'd wanna be right by the hotel and, and just eat. And this wonderful man would make me a wonderful dinner every night uh, and we ate very privately uh, reasonably in this Lebanese restaurant. Wake up in the morning at the Raspail, very modest, quiet, small, Art Deco uh, kind of restaurant, stepping up, stepping down with the V lighting. And you know, have eggs, they'd make us eggs in the morning. And off to Perpignan we go on the Gare Lyon, which is a famous train station. You know, we, we always look at, um, uh, the uh, Grand Central Station. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Penn Station just opened up. It's now called, oh, don't ask me the name now. It's a man's name, I just saw it yesterday. Um, but Penn Station in New York has been completely remodeled and reopened as of, I think yesterday, it just started on Facebook. So this is where we were. We were up here in Paris and six hours straight down to, to the Mediterranean is Perpignan. Only an hour away from Art Nouveau Barcelona. Okay, so that's, that's where we traveled. Six hour ride and you see all the beautiful landscape of Paris. And Thibaut picks us up, a very nice young man at the Gare de Perpignan, which is the train station of Perpignan. And just look at the light. Where do you see this? I have a picture of the colors and the extraordinary building. Whoa, we call these the warm colors, reds, oranges, and yellows, opposite the cool colors, which are blues, greens, and purples. But wow, this is just fabulous. And he takes us to our hotel, the Hotel Windsor, which was Art Deco. We already know this from the straight lines and the, the cutting off like a hexagon, right? And um, this is a little a modest hotel. It was the best Western of all things. Welcome to Perpignan. It's where they speak a Catalan. It's one of the uh, Catalan uh, buildings, uh, uh, counties, where Barcelona and France are the Catalonians. And here we have the uh, bar and place where we have breakfast in the morning. And I arrive and I meet with 
Philippe Lager, he is president of the Perpignan Art Deco Society, and he's busy, you know, we're in the midst of a big festival, which we did not go to the whole thing because we want to go to Paris. And he's busy talking with Brigitte Fossi. She is a very famous person. You can imagine, they call her the Shirley Temple of France. She was a child actress and singer, performer. Uh, we all know how famous Shirley Temple is, and we can imagine how famous Brigitte is. Uh, so he, he sent us off to go see a movie. The film festival had began, and we go to the movie theater. And this is the same kind of awning that we saw at the Hotel Raspail. So this is obviously a very French kind of uh, building for a, a, an entrance. But we'll see here the one, two, three. We see the rounded corners here. Um, and uh, we enter, and we participate in the Art Deco Film Society that's going on. The lobby of the, 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 the lobby was very modest, you know, just a small movie theater, but we see the stepping down like the pyramids and we see very geometric. Uh, and we look here, the, the, the uh, floor has kind of little pyramids in there. Terrazzo is Art Deco from the, that era. But I, the, the red, black and white was really shocked me, very modern graphic look. And this is where the whole city began. It's called Castillo de Perpignan. This is a big castle, a big fort. It was built in the 14th century as the entrance to the city. So this is a very old city. Yet it is known for its Art Deco because it was built again in the 30s and 40s. So there's an old part of town and the new part of town. And I get privy, of course, the whole week that I'm there for the festival, I see the old part and the new part. So this is what it looked like. This is not a postcard. It was just glorious. There's a, 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 a little a river that we cross uh, walking over. There's two sides, kind of like a little intracoastal waterway right in the middle of town of Perpignan. And then they take me to the building where I will be speaking, the Chamber of Commerce. As the keynote speaker, this is an Art Deco building, and I kick off uh, the, the, the speaker series, and um, they had an automobile show and uh, the film festival, you know, like a true Art Deco festival. But all the flowers are in bloom, and it was just glorious. Sun is shining. So Linda and I go for dinner. This is where they had had lunch that day, but we had missed it. So they invited, you know, they invited us to go ahead, go have a dinner where they had just, we missed the luncheon. But you can see the Art Deco lettering, the straight lines, the thick and the thin that we learned about last week, Art Deco lettering. We see the little pyramid lighting and um, we had an amazing lunch, dinner rather than. So that night we joined Philippe and Bridget in a, in a theater where she did a wonderful performance from the American Songbook. All of the uh, wonderful songs uh, from uh, uh, the uh, early days. Uh, Eric Ants was uh, the piano player and she sang all night and you see they're filming it and it was just amazing. And um, again, she's the friend Shirley Temple. And I asked, oh, oh, will you please take a picture of me? Which of course she did. And the funny story is, uh, you know, we leave the building. Uh, these were the doorknobs, uh, the stylized Indians in this bar that we were at where she performed. And the next day, she found out who I was and she asked to take a photo with me. And she came back and took a picture with me, which I was really, really honored. I thought that was very, very cool. Um, but uh, this this part of the trip got canceled. The, the festival was going to continue. We were going to have two nights in the Catalonia and Pyrenees Mountains at the Grand Hotel at the Font Romu, uh, uh, Rom, Romu. and it was canceled. Uh, a big hurricane kind of came in and washed out the roads, um, but we was going to stay at this fabulous Art Deco Grand Hotel, and that did not happen, but, but it went on. Things went on. So um, uh, Thibaut took us the next day to the beach, which was a great thing. So we, 
It was about a 15 minute ride, maybe six miles to the beach. And this is the beach where all the restaurants, it's like a big boardwalk with restaurants and bars and really fabulous place. And we're just sitting overlooking here. You can see here, we're overlooking the water. This is the water right here. And you can see where, you know, Cezanne was, was influenced by all of his boat paintings and things like that. Uh, here's the beach, which I did go put my toes into the water. And we had wonderful parfaits and ice cream and French pastry, very French thing to do. And we walked back to our car through very old part of town, very beachy, uh, you know, flowers everywhere, dogs everywhere. <laughs> So on the way home, uh, the person who drove us, uh, she stopped off, she goes, because we're, we're on a highway, and she goes, let's see if we can get in to this castle. There's castles all throughout. Now, this is not Art Deco. This was the owners of the Job Tobacco Papers, which is Art Nouveau. Remember, we always talk about the Job, J-O-B, J-O-B, we, when we learn about Art Nouveau, where the women's vines are growing and flowers in their hair, the very feminine period of Art Nouveau. So they own the Job cigarette papers, which everyone knows who smokes marijuana. We buy these cigarette papers to roll our own cigarettes, marijuana cigarettes. Um, and uh, this was their castle and their property. And we got to walk uh, the property and see all the, the flowers. Uh, it's a huge property. We could not get into the castle. It was late already, but it was just a beautiful sight to see and another beautiful dinner. And now we're getting ready for my lecture. There's Philippe. He's bringing all the equipment and we're, we're going in the back entrance. Here's the, the front entrance. This is the Chamber of Commerce. And we enter this grand building and immediately this wonderful stained glass window. And we know the straight lines in art makes it Art Deco. Uh, I don't know what all these things represent, but we do know the one, two, three uh, panels. Oh, here we go. This is the, um, the fort that enters uh, the uh, Perpignan. Remember we saw the Pyrenees fort. So all these things of course represent the things that we find like the wine, here's grapes and things like that. Okay, so I'm getting ready to speak. It's official and I start walking around the building because it was many floors and just such a beautiful building with Art Deco lighting and different things going on in every room. I mean, you know, the building is open. It's a professional chamber of commerce. This is one of the meeting rooms uh, where they would have, uh, this is so cool, it's like 60s lighting. And this was another room. I just kept going from room to room taking pictures of this beautiful chamber of commerce. And this was the room I was speaking in with its tall windows. And we're setting up the projector. Of course, you always have problems setting things up and you know, we're so worried. We had to open the window. There was no air conditioning in France. <laughs> and we all live in Florida, so we appreciate air conditioning. But the, the curtains blue is very romantic actually. And from the view from the window, just magnificent, all of France, not France, Perpignan. And I have my hair pulled up tight because it's hot. <laughs> and here we are getting ready, Linda and I. And okay, so we, I'm giving this lecture and someone asks, do you speak French? No, I speak Spanish. We know that I was in Cuba the last lecture. Well, how will they understand you? Well, it turns out most people there understood French, but this, they gave me an interpreter that I never had to use once because everything in Art Deco is one, two, three. And I do know how to say, un, deux, trois. So I was able to look at everything and say, un, deux, trois, <laughs> and, you know, explain. But my lecture was all about Palm Beach County Art Deco, all about Lake Worth, and the Cultural Council building and the Lake Worth Playhouse, all about the Armory Art Center, all about the Norman Museum of Art with its Diana and Acteon Paul Manship sculptures. So I went to France and brought Palm Beach County to France. 
Just like now today, I'm bringing France to Palm Beach County and the world, whoever's watching our wonderful Zoom lecture. Okay, so now we're in Perpignan and we get to see new Perpignan a little bit. This is just a touch where we'll see un, deux, trois, right? We'll see three straight lines. We'll see uh, the, the ribbed glassing, the rounded corners, which are the streamlined moderne, rounded steps, and uh, I'm, uh, these wonderful balls that we see here. Okay, and we'll see a little more Art Deco, rounded ironworks, concentric circles. We'll see one, two, three, un, deux, trois. We see the geometric patio. This kind of reminds us of the Hollywood movie star. Porthole windows, just think. We have porthole windows in Palm Beach County. They have them here to remind us of the, the speed and the ship and the movement of this ship. Okay, now pink and gray, that really shocked me because pink and gray colors are really from the 80s and 90s. They don't have a lot of buildings painted up colors uh, like we do our, in our tropical climate of South Florida. But, so the pink and gray is quite lovely, but I was surprised to see that. Well, actually it's a peachy kind of color. They have a lot of earth tones and, and beiges and browns. This is another building with the porthole. One, two, three, four, five. Now you can say, Sharon, that's not three. But we do know that odd numbers are very good in design. So three, five, that's okay. But here we'll see one, two, three stair, uh, uh, windows right here. So then we went to see this medieval fortress, right? Because this town is, is a fort. So this obviously is the old part of Perpignan. Look at that view. Oh my God. Just amazing. Now look at this. See this? We're going to climb these steps. The steps, can you see this? These are steps that surround the fortress. And here we are walking up the steps. Okay, everyone has to protect themselves, right? This is not Art Deco, this is medieval. Just, just wanted you to know. But, but Philippe took us to visit this because this is of course a rich part of the history. Okay, so now the next day, we're gonna go see all the Art Deco that Perpignan has to offer. So we see the rounded corners and we see the very geometric here, we see the stepping up kind of inverted pyramids. We see the one, two, three, the one, two, three, rounded windows, one, two, three. Okay, we'll see Art Deco doorways with concentric circles, ironworks. Here we'll see one, two, three stripes and one, two, three stripes. We'll see straight lines in the, in the carpeting. We see the terrazzo. And I remember I made them stop the car and make me get out to take a picture of this. <laughs> we were driving. Neon is invented in the Art Deco era. Why? Because people are driving around in cars, automobiles, speed, right? All these things that are connecting the world and they invent neon so people can see, eat at Joe's or, or, or illuminate a gas station, where to buy gas at night. So neon is an Art Deco element that we know. And then we see this glorious Art Deco eyebrow that we have in Florida. Eyebrow is the flat linear plane that is over a window or, or a roof or, or, or a door to, to keep the sun out. So we see this wonderful eyebrow. Here we'll see another eyebrow, a little stepping down. A little, all this geometric, it's just amazing, this modernism, these little straight lines all over. It looks like another view of that. We see very, very geometric buildings with no ornament. Do, do you realize, you know, we always see um, little squiggles on buildings and this minimal age, this very geometric time changed the world where we could never look back. We just, we, we entered this minimal time, this streamlined modern time, okay? The rounded corner, the rounded brick, the rounded, ceiling but here well if you could see little diamonds or little triangles so we're just in a car and I'm, 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 I'm jumping out of the car every time I see something here we see triangular buildings how brilliant is that just by the view that you would get right here's a front view and here's a side view 
Un, deux, trois. We'll, we'll see um, all kinds of balance. If we were to divide this building, what's on the left is on the right. We call that central balance. And uh, here are some eyebrows and patios. Even brick, we'll see little tiles in the pyramid shape. This is not Art Deco, but this is the pyramid shape on this. And I just thought this was such an unusual building. So we know there's nothing Art Deco about this, right? This is more Gothic looking. Okay, here we have the rounded buildings and the little eyebrow, little triangle, little half of hexagons. So can you imagine this modern architecture next to a medieval uh, fort and they coexist? It's really an amazing town. Here we have uh, the stepping down. Now this Perpignan, uh, Philippe only started this like three years ago that he started documenting, wrote a book uh, and, and started the Art Deco Society and is causing world attention to the Art Deco architecture in France. This is not like people knew about this forever and ever. This is all new that I'm bringing to you. Whoop, go back. Here we see the little pyramid. You know, th these are like, um, in every Western movie you ever see, like this looks like the front of the corral or the, the bar, you know. Uh, the, these shapes we see over and over again, but they're very, very important and significant. Peach, they have a lot of peach buildings. Eyebrow, uh, the hexagon, the rounded corners. Whoa, look at this kind of concentric circles and balance. And it's repeated. This is a driveway and then it's repeated up here. And the, the, the eyebrow, you know, everyone thinks eyebrows are only in uh, Dixie Highway in Lake Worth, or they think eyebrows are only in um, Miami Beach. They're all over the world, Art Deco architecture. Look at this, rounded corner, rounded eyebrows. These stripes, we call the racing stripes, the bandings. Of course, the one, two, three. <laughs> This looks like a WPA, uh, when you uh, fly over bridge, you'll see this in New Orleans. You see these kind of bridges in many places, but here we see the one, two, three, the stepping back, the very uh, Art Deco kind of modern, uh, this is a, a bridge overlay, Pont to Geoffrey. Rounded corners, porthole windows, circles. We're almost, we're almost there. Again, wonderful <clears throat> doorways. Uh, we, we all know what Art Deco is, right? I don't even have to tell you. We have diamonds and stepping down and, and straight lines, geometry, one, two, three, one, two, three. This is really something. The stylized, this could be a water fountain, stylized or a flower. Um, we don't know what it means. We see this all over Miami, these shapes, circles. Um, a very old building with an old doorway. Rounded corners, streamline. And brick, it's amazing to see Art Deco in brick like this. We don't usually see this. Usually we see it in stucco with the one porthole window. Uh, here we go in and out. This is what the streets look like. Very populated area. Um, and uh, very narrow with bandings and stepping down and stepping up the inverted pyramid, rounded corners. You can see why they have an Art Deco society. I mean, they have such a wealth of design. Rounded corners, stepping in, plenty of sunshine. Glass block, which we know is meant to keep, uh, where did we go? Is meant to keep the, the heat in. It was a modern invention, glass block. But even the glass block here steps down and steps down. The three stripes, porthole window with the three bands. Um, this is a corner of a building. How interesting is this? These are apartments, a corner of apartments. Three portholes. More ironworks with more circles and more triangles and more uh, chevrons. This looks like the Sterling Building in Lincoln Road, uh, where Books and Books is in South Beach in Miami, where if you divide the line, you have the low portholes and then the rounded 
uh, corners and the architecture. But in Miami, they might paint this building up in all different colors, although now all the buildings in Miami are white. And this, of course, is beige. Everything seems to be more of the muted neutrals. Here we see the, the ribbing and the stepping down, the stepping up. Oh, wow, look at this. This is so interesting. Little reliefs in here and little stripes going up. And here's more relief, little designs. And oh, look at this. Under the patio is even shapes. Now this building is painted very nicely, but we'll see the one, two, three, and the, the straight lines, the geometry. This is the Mondrian right here. We just right here in the, in the doorway, we'll see Mondrian. Any of these look like Mondrian. So this is our last building. Philippe says goodbye, and all of us agreed Oh, we love this building so much. And then Philippe said, oh my God, this was his favorite building. Uh, Cause we were walking around at this point. And um, it's just so interesting. Stop that. Uh, with the one, two, threes and multifaceted. And just the flowers and the gardenias, the aroma. And uh, we, we said goodbye to Philippe. And uh, Linda and I went on our way to see the Art Nouveau in Barcelona. But that's another lecture. So thank you and stay safe. Please wear your masks, even if you got the first shot, even if you got the second shot. Let's all stay safe together so next year we can do this in person. Mwah. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. It was wonderful. I'm going to stop my share and go to gallery view. You were terrific. Thank you so much, thank you. everybody. Thank you for hanging in there. To 75 people, my God, thank you. It was that terrific. Was... You're a very vivacious speaker. Thank you. If thank anyone you has any questions, much. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, okay. He's also a lovely person and a great artist. <laughs> That's Barbara Weinstein. Uh, she takes my Tuesday class at Old School Square online with teaching mixed media collage. Boy, I'm a busy person, right? <laughs> thank you, Barbara Weinstein, and thank you, uh, Lorraine Bauman, and thank you, Charlotta. Thank you, Valencia Isles. Thank you, Armory Art Center, and thank you all for coming. I look forward thank to you, seeing you next month. Yes. Very informative. Thank Fantastic. You. Bye. All right, so I'll keep you all informed. Go to artdecopv.org. Click on that link if you can't find it. I'm calling you tomorrow. I'm calling you tomorrow. Fantastic. Mm -hmm.